Hello everyone, Nev here, and today I am doing another installment of my spread creation videos. And this time we're going to um, create Lenormand spreads. <laughs> um, yeah, so I this is my Ghibli Lenormand. Um, I obviously I, I can't sell this. I, I made it myself. Um, I had it printed on make playing cards, uh, but. I can't sell this, obviously, because uh, I don't own the rights to uh, Studio Ghibli, uh, but here are the backs, and um, yeah, it's a pretty fun deck. Um, very cute. Uh, I'm not going to go through this deck, but I also, um, so I created uh, two versions of this, uh, this small size that's like a two and a half by two and a half square, and then also a uh, bridge size. And I actually never bought the bridge size for myself, but I have it in my account. So someday I'm gonna buy that bridge version. And the bridge version, it's, um, you know, bridge sized, and uh, it's got the name of the card at the bottom, which uh, I think I would prefer, because sometimes I forget uh, what the Lenormand uh, cards are. I mean, obviously this one, um, is a uh, not knife, but uh, <laughs> not sword. Um, dagger? I, I can't remember. Scythe. Scythe. Oh my god, scythe. <laughs> I just got it. <laughs> Took me a moment, but yeah. So, I mean, and that's part of the problem. Uh, this is ring. I, I know. Let's see if I can focus there. <laughs> and mice and tree, uh, fish, um, ship. Yes, ship. Um, and birds, <laughs> yeah, and mountain and uh, clover, heart, yeah, there, you know, there's it's it's a bunch anyway. That's not the point of this video is to go through <laughs> all of my uh Studio Ghibli cards, um, but yeah, I, I think I will eventually get my uh have myself printed, um. A larger version so that I can uh, actually have the names of the cards on there. <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, we're gonna create Lenormand spreads, and um, this might sound odd or unintuitive because it's Lenormand is not the same as Harrow. Um, so when I have a slightly more uh, traditional take on Lenormand, um, where where in that when I do a Lenormand reading, uh, even if it's small, like a two card reading, something like that, that's about as small as you can go with Lenormand. Um, again, I'm I'm just saying these these rules as um, just guidelines. <laughs> but sorry about that noise. That's my dog going in and out of the dog door. But um, like everyone can use their cards however they want, right? You know, if you want to use Lenormand like a tarot, uh, you know, it, it might make someone like me like eh, a little bit, but you know, it's your it's your cards, it's your deck, and you do whatever you do whatever the hell you want to do. <laughs> you do you, boo. Um, but like my take on Lenormand is a bit on the traditional side, uh, wherein. I don't really have like a book of Lenormand spreads, you know, like I would with tarot. Where tarot, you can have like cards going all in different angles, and like you can do like a whole shape thing, or you know, like you can and you can have them like stacked on top of each other in different ways. I mean, this doesn't really work because it's a square deck, but you know what I mean, <laughs> um, something like that. Whereas Lenormand, um, for me, um, the the smallest you can do is. A two card reading because Lenormand is meant to be read off of each other um, and in the proximity of the other cards that are around it and um, also uh, Lenormand for me is a very grid based um, system uh, because it's when I'm doing a Lenormand reading I'm viewing it as a small part of a grand tableau every Lenormand reading for me is just a part of a grand tableau. So like uh, a two card reading is fine. Like I typically do either a three card or a nine card box, which, you know, everyone kind of knows what that looks like here. Um, or maybe you don't, maybe, maybe you're new to Lenormand. Um, but yeah, a typical nine card Lenormand box like that. Um, and, uh, I think this is the most like versatile, um, of the, and approachable, uh, Lenormand readings, a nine card box. Um, but you could also do a six card reading, 
Um, I typically like to stick with three, six, or nine, um, or a grand tableau, but you could also do a four card reading like that as part of a grand, uh, supposedly a grand tableau. Um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> so how are we gonna create spreads then um, when I have a slightly more rigid approach to um, Lenormand? Um, so, um, and this, this idea kinda came to me like I think yesterday and I, I have not fleshed this out at all, so this may not work. Uh, <laughs> They're zoomed out a little bit so that uh, I can have more space here. But um, so I thought uh, while sticking with the idea of um, traditional Lenormand layouts, let's do a nine, uh, a six card here. Just make it simple. Uh, a six card reading here. Um, one thing I was thinking that we could possibly do is use other decks like a tarot, a... Um, an oracle, something else like that, um, as sort of influence, influencing each of these positions, if that makes sense. And we can start off even more simple and use another Lenormand deck. This is my um, Stingpunk Lenormand, um, because this is actually something that's uh, typically done. I just tied a knot in this. There we go. All right. Um, so this is my Steampunk Lenormand, uh, and in fact, I have a Steampunk Lenormand pick a card on my Instagram if you're interested. Um, maybe if I remember, I'll leave a direct link to that post, Instagram post, and you can pick a Steampunk card. <laughs> um, all right, so like, so this is a pretty typical thing in Lenormand. Uh, it's a house-based uh, thing, a uh, reading, because um, when you lay out a grand tableau, you could read it uh as if the, those are the houses and and you can create houses like let's this deck is so large though <laughs> so i think i'm going to stick with three a three card rating here so here is essentially we're creating the houses of a lenormand reading and this is kind of the influence of that house and then laying over top of it we can have our uh, actual reading right here oops that's a issue with having a uh, square deck. They turn around sometimes for me. So, um, uh, stork, I think that's stork, yeah. Stork in the house of fox. Uh, ring in the house of, um, I think that's house, actually. <laughs> and, um, and mice in the house of writer. So, and that's one way we could read it. Now, in a grand tableau, if I had uh, a Lenormand card that was representing each of the houses, and then I had uh, a another Lenormand card on top of it, indicating the reading, uh, one thing, one uh, element of reading is using the houses to um, read each other. So, um, stork in the house of the fox, I would find wherever the fox was uh, in the reading itself and see what card... Uh, was under that, you <laughs> know, and that's different layers of reading Lenormand. Um, I'm sorry if this is a little confusing. Like, like I said, I kind of just s thought of this, so um, I don't have the idea really fleshed out. Uh, but I'm just kind of going with the flow. Um, anyway, so that's that's using Lenormand, uh, Lenormand houses. But I was using, I this whole thing is using that idea, Lenormand houses, um, to kind of create. A Lenormand spread. So um, that's using Lenormand. What if we use uh, tarot? So I grabbed um, a small, I was, I was trying to find some of my small decks, so I grabbed the Beginner's uh, Tarot Luna's Bear Edition, um, and this is both English and Japanese, um, but obviously we're just going to be paying attention to the English here. So let's say, for example, and because this one's small, we can go a little bit larger. So let's see, um, this is a sample Lenormand reading. It's gonna be six cards. So we'll do one right here. And these are indicating the houses of uh, this Lenormand reading. So um, we're using tarot as the houses. <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, it's a, it's definitely an interesting take on this situation. So, um, in, so let's see, it, would we want to have like, an actual question first. Um, I think so. So, oops, sorry, I'm my uh, I'm wearing short alls right now, overalls, and they just grabbed the camera. <laughs> um, so, um, 
So let's say we came up with a question. Let's say, uh, whew, how will this party go for me? <laughs> or something like that. Because with Lenormand, you're, you're kind of answering just one specific question. That We don't have spread positions that represent different things. We're, we're kind of... Uh, We've got one specific question that Lenormand answers, and that's my how I use Lenormand. is It's very punchy. It's very straight to the point. There's no, um, it, there's very little like, you know, because tarot uses a bit more psychology, or um, they, it's a bit more of a therapy aids um, than say Lenormand, which is a bit more divinatory and a bit more well fortune tellery or something like that. <laughs> you know, it's a bit more oracular. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so when I read, uh, when I do a Lenormand reading, there's kind of one specific question, and so let's pretend the question here is, how will this party go for me and these are the six positions I pulled out um, from the tarot card so um, I might read this as because um, uh, it's the four of pentacles I might read it as being closed off um, venturing out of my uh, bubble here um, maybe a fear of rejection um, on, and un d being disinterested in how it's going um, and then kind of coming out of my shell a bit, but maybe there's like, you know, realizing that, uh, you know, I, it, I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I am some people's cup of tea, you know, or wine <laughs> in this case. Um, so, I mean, that was a very simple reading. Um, that's a tarot reading, but we have this in a, uh, Lenormand layout. So we could layer on top of that. And, you know, and some people might, some Lenormand readers might gasp at me doing this. Um, I, I am just playing around here. And like I said, I tend to um, take a slightly more, um, uh, I'm just, I have some of these twisted around. So I just wanted to make sure that they are not anymore. Um, that's the thing about using square uh, decks, but... Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm just sort of playing around. I, I'm read I'm going to be reading this as a Lenormand reading, but with the context of these tarot cards, um, as sort of guiding that position. So, um, how will this party go? Sample reading. Uh, this is the general, um, flow of energy we're seeing. And now let's see how that might look on top. So, <laughs> Crossroads, uh, trying to decide if we're coming out of that shell. And then uh, man. And this is bouquet. Uh, and this, these are stars, the stars. Uh, letter and heart. Okay, so, so we might read this as a, if we were just looking at a Lenormand reading, um, I, I, you know, it's funny because I almost never use a six card when I do <laughs> Norman readings. I, I, it's honestly three or nine, but, um, so this is slightly off than what I would normally use. But, um, so if I'm just looking at the Lenormand reading here, um, I would say starting off th this party, um, is kind of a, a questioning, um, and maybe there's a person there we're not sure we want to, uh, be around or confront, or maybe we kind of have a secret admiring for this person. There's this bouquet, um, uh, or this person, there's a person that may be offering, we got the invitation from this person. That and especially with that person on top of the letter, so maybe that's what what's going on here. Um, we got this invitation from this person. We're trying to decide if we need to go. Um, stars is a mm, I, I kind of think of stars as, as a sort of guiding light, and I think this is generally indicating that this is something I should do. And overall, it's going to be something pleasant and. Um, uh, that I'm going to enjoy because we end it here with heart. So it's very simple um, Lenormand reading there. Again, I don't normally do uh, um, six cards, so I, I, I'm slightly thrown off here. <laughs> yeah. um, but then, you know, the next element of a Lenormand reading, you can knight it. So uh, heart and crossroads um, uh, knight here. So this is something we're not sure we're going to like. Um, 
and we're still trying to decide if that's a path we want to do. Uh, let's see. It does it, it, since it's a six card, they they only knight here and here. So bouquet and stars. Um, this is the way to go to accept that invitation. So there we go. And we can't really knight these two, but yeah, I, I happen to enjoy knighting. This is probably why I don't normally do a six card uh, Lenormand reading because I actually really enjoy knighting. <laughs> but anyway, so. Yeah, and then now we can, like, further look into that. So uh, we have, we kind of have a tarot reading, we have a Lenormand reading, and now we have them together. Um, yeah, it's it's like we're in, uninterested in taking this leap here, and we, we're, we're resistant to that. But again, it knighted with that heart, so it's kind of that way to go. And we're, we're nervous about it because we feel like, you know, maybe sometimes uh, it's difficult for us to be around people who we know don't really care for us much. But we also have to remember that there's other people there too, and they do care about us. And um, we are, in general, going to have fun accepting this invitation you know, because that's the invitation here. Um, put, potentially, this was an ex-lover or an ex, uh, maybe an ex-friend or something like that. So uh, maybe that's another reason why we're feeling a little bit um, anxious about accept, accepting this uh, with the bouquet on top of the Three of Swords. Um, or maybe we feel like we're betraying someone else by taking this um, uh, action. But again, overall, like we don't really have any negative Lenormand cards and um you know because with tarot it's uh you know there there are cards that are tougher but it's it's hard to say a card is definitely negative or definitely positive you know you can make that argument about different cards but with Lenormand there are definitely negative cards definitely positive cards neutral cards and uh, n neutral negative and neutral positive, you know, that, those are the kind of the categories of Lenormand cards. And, um, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that is definitely a thing and I don't see any negative cards here. So in general, this will be a pretty positive experience. So there we go. There's a sample reading using, uh, tarot as, uh, spread, spread positions, I guess, not really spread positions, but like, a an added layer of a Lenormand spread, um, so, and again, I know that this isn't exactly traditional. Um, so one thing you could also do is like a, uh, using archetypes and this is not the seed and sinkhole. It's just the bag for it. <laughs> this is the, um, the original Citadel deck, uh, the one that came in the, uh, special edition of the seed and sinkhole. Um, yeah, so the, this one is just like the larger version, except it's, um, it's smaller and it doesn't have as many cards because uh, the new version added more cards to it. So, but I grabbed this one because it's a bit more pocket sized. Uh, it's it's kind of a travel version of that deck, um, which is how, ooh, hello, which is how I'm choosing to embrace this. this. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so it doesn't quite have all the same um, cards, but let's do a simple three card um, using this because, you know, one thing because of the shape, you think you could maybe do something that's off like that, but I would not do that with a Lenormand reading. Um, I would not read like that personally. Um, but that is, you could create spreads, uh, with these decks, like with this deck specifically like this, and then use a tarot on top of that. I mean, I'm just <laughs> messing around here. This is obviously not the uh, point of this video, but this is another way of creating spreads using these, uh, um, the hexagonal shape here to create a sort of tarot spread like that. But because Lenormand for me is done very much in a square grid uh, sort of way, uh, something like this wouldn't work. I'm um, sorry about the light shifting constantly. I think clouds are like going um, back and forth in front of the sun. So um, I do apologize for that. But let's do a like a three card reading like this. And we could do a nine card, but uh, I don't know. I think I, I think I just want to stick with the three card right here. So, all right. So we've got that initial reading of... I guess it's more of a should I accept or what, how will this party go? And we saw how the party would go. Um, maybe a follow-on question 
would be, oh, I have two things here, right here. And of course I would ask this question before I drew the cards, but again, I'm, I'm kind of like, again, I just came up with this off the top of my head. So um, this has not been fleshed out. So you're kind of playing along with me here. Um, yeah, man, that light keeps going. <laughs> um, so a follow on question. We, we have determined that the party will, in general, be pretty fun. Um, and it'll be a wise choice to take that invitation and go to that party. Uh, now, a follow-on question would be maybe what problems might occur at the, like, I mean, I guess that's more of a negative uh, approach to it, but <laughs> these are just sample questions. Um, what, what, would, what is the main problem that will show up at the party? All right, so we have fate, the witch, and the wise one. And um, since this is an oracle, uh, I'm going to have to look at the, <laughs> the book. But if I'm just going off of my, mm, my instinct here, uh, fate would be like something that's bound to happen and you kind of knew it was going to happen. And sure enough, it this is going to happen, um, which may be having to do with uh, control and wise one may be rising above it. Um, of course, this is just me uh, throwing out ideas here. Let me see if I can find. So which right here is uh, abandoning tradition, experimentation. So that's a good one. Creating your own destiny. destiny. So uh, again, like taking control. And then wise one is probably right before. No, it's not right before. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. All right, found it. Wise one. So old knowledge, uh, following tradition, order. All right. So the witch kind of goes against tradition or ban abandoning tradition. Um, and then the wise one is following tradition. So that's interesting. <laughs> um, and the fate, I, I assume fate in general, like I'm not even going to search try to find it in here it's it's in there somewhere I'm, I'm using my own interpretation here for a moment um so yeah I think what I kind of said in the beginning was what we'll go with fate is you know we kind of knew this was going to happen we like I, I think the wise one is preparing for it preparing for the situation and then the witch sort of because I was thinking maybe the wise one sort of rises above, but I think maybe the wise one knows that this is uh, happening or going to happen. And the witch is sort of that, well, I'm just going to be defiant and I'm going to take control of my own life and do what I, what I want to do. All right. So that works. That's my makeshift uh, reading for that. <laughs> so then we can ask uh, the Lenormand, we could do a simple three card Lenormand reading, um, asking the question, uh, what is the main issue we uh, that I will experience at this party? Um, and I say I, but like, you know, it's I, I just made up this question. I made up this party. <laughs> so what is the main issue that will happen at this party? Um, here we go. And we can have, so we've got, uh, I believe this is, hmm, I'm trying to remember. Uh... I think that's house actually and then ship and then fox interesting okay um yeah because fox is off you know fox is in generally in general kind of a uh negative um position for Le or card for lenormand and it uh it can it can mean like a trickstery sort of behavior, lying, cheating, um, that sort of thing. Um, it can also indicate a, like the other woman or um, something like that. The, the, the trouble person, <laughs> um, that might be one interpretation here. So, um, so this is, so with house here, we've got Howl's Moving Castle as the interpretation of house. <laughs> So house, ship, and fox. Um, house, maybe it's a house party. Um, you know, and maybe the, uh, maybe the, maybe we have to travel a bit. Let's, let's do this right here so I can just pay attention to the little run real quick. Um, 
So maybe there is a bit of a travel to get to this house. So maybe that's part of the issue. But we know that there's going to be someone there that we're not too fond of. Maybe they live there. <laughs> um, and I didn't get the uh, feeling that it was the... Um, the the man card from the previous reading that we're going to have trouble with here um this is probably the maybe the uh, uh that person's current relationship um that person we might have issues with um so that's that's kind of the main issue we're seeing here <laughs> and now how can we connect that to uh the um oracle cards underneath or the uh um archetype cards underneath so the wise one I think we need to, based on what's going on here, I think we need to just uh, deal with this situation. Like, you know, I don't think this person's really going to cause much issue. I mean, we we just got a very positive uh, um, first reading, according uh, as far as this pretend party goes. <laughs> um, in generally, in general, it's going to be a good time. There's going to be someone there that's not going to be our cup of tea but I think in general we'll be, find ways to avoid them and I think that's what I see here with um the ship being on top of the witch here we're kind of just taking control of our own uh situation here um this is possibly that tradition that we're stepping away from um yeah and and then rising above here taking control and being the bigger person and I, I would say in general we're just trying to avoid this person so that it, the biggest issue is there's going to be someone there that we don't particu particularly like maybe it's the new lover maybe new friend of the person who invited us and we're not exactly thrilled maybe we're not exactly over that person it depends on the context of the situation of course I, I'm completely making up the story <laughs> um but yeah in general there we go so um so that was fun and one more uh kind of little experiment i don't know how well this will work um because it's different <laughs> but uh you could also i i what initially gave me the idea for this was me um messing around here with my uh rujin kado uh my dragon god cards and of course these are in japanese i'm not even going to attempt to uh read the japanese on this um but um, I just wanted to lay out what like would be a nine card box. So let's let's say this is um, the um, the sample reading here. I don't know what the question would be because I'm not actually going to read these uh, because I would need to um, study the Japanese real quick. <laughs> and I'm, and right now I don't want to do that. Um, I I am studying this deck, learning Japanese, but um, I'm not as proficient. I just want to lay this out and kind of just see the. Um, how how I might use uh, a reading like this with my Dragon God cards. Um, so yeah, here's a nine card box. Um, t simple uh, reading there. And each of these um, phrases down here at the bottom kind of means something. And I, I've been coming up with a key f uh, word for each of these cards. Um, yeah, so, and then you would lay um, these on top. So I, I'm, of course, these are just, this is just a little sample reading to kind of get an idea of what uh, this might look like. And here we go. So we're going to see some of the same cards because I didn't do a super great job shuffling. And one of the things I like about this is um, when we lay it over top of these cards, we can see the name of the dragon god at the top and then the key phrase underneath with the Lenormand card in the middle. So that's an, another way to kind of add another layer to this. So that's pretty cool. All right. So um, one last thing. Um, I think I said this was going to be the last thing, but um, one last little experiment I want to do is maybe using um, taking a more spiritual approach and using a um, like deity cards I, I mean I, I know these are dragon gods but um, they're not they're not um, <laughs> from mythology dragon gods these are more uh, um, fantasy <laughs> sort of uh, dragon gods because I don't I don't think any of the gods are the dragon gods that are depicted in here are actual Japanese deities um, but yeah they just call them Dragon gods. Um, so one thing we might try to do is, uh, so let me just grab this because it's the closest thing to me and it's brand new. Um, this is my Kaliak, uh, Wisdom of the Kaliak. So maybe 
we have a Lenormand re reading going on, and we're maybe we'll switch. We'll like, oh gosh, mixed decks here. I almost dropped these cards. <laughs> so let's say uh, the center is one of the cards from this deck. And this is, you know, because with a nine card box in Lenormand, the center card, depending on how you read, tends to be the focus. So let's do the center card here as the focus from uh, whatever deity we follow. In this case, it would be uh, on Kaliak. And I have here the Nocturna Oracle. And we can put, since these are so large, I think I'm, we're just going to do a three card here. Um, but you could also do a nine card. Um, so let me just grab two cards to go on either side here. Dawn and Starfish. There we go. So there's a simple three card. Again, sorry about all the light sh shifting going on. I, I am right in front of a window. Um, yeah, and clouds are going in front of the sky and stuff. All right, so in this case, let's see. Would I do, would I pull the middle card first? I don't think I would. I, I With Lenormand, I kind of just pull from left to right, top to bottom, and then the center card is the focus. So we'll, I, I'll continue like that. So tree, um, coffin, and broom. So that would be an interesting reading. So this is the crossroads. Um, this is the message from the... Uh, from whatever deity, in this case it would be on Kaliak. Um, so I would read uh, these cards, this reading first, then I would read uh, the Lenormand on top as a Lenormand reading, and then I would combine that based on what it's on top of. So that's another way to do it. And maybe the crossroads is uh, a fear of it ending. Um, this is something that's uh, been rooted um, there's a fear of it ending and or uh, and because the broom is in general kind of negative. Um, I can't remember if it's kind of neutral negative or it's a fully negative, um, but it's kind of at a repeated abuse sort of situation. Um, or so then maybe it's not a fear. Maybe the crossroads is us um, uh, kind of getting the courage to get out of what we're stuck in, um, finding a new dawn, essentially, <laughs> a new dawn, a new day, and breaking free from um, this abusive situation. That's That could be, I mean, if we're going to go with uh, deity type um, readings here, uh, it's probably going to be on a bigger subject, something like that. So that's one way to do it. And while I have uh, this deck out, um, the Nocturna happens to be my daily pull for the day. So I am going to do a shuffle real quick and do my daily pull. So it keeps me accountable doing this on camera, even though it has nothing to do with my video and isn't really gonna mean anything to you guys, but <laughs> I'm going to pull my daily card here. And we have kelp. And I'm gonna just look up the book real quick and see what kelp means in the book. All right, so let me see, kelp, 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 kelp. Th page 14, page 14. So kelp is entanglement, uh, subconscious. Many people feel uneasy being in a body of water, especially when a piece of seaweed brushes against their foot. Uh, however, kelp forests are extremely important ocean ecosystems. As with anything uh, associated with the sea, kelp can be an indicator of something growing below the surface uh, in the subconscious. Like a kelp forest rich in nutrients, this could be something that provides a benefit to your life. On the other hand, this could be some sort of difficulty, which is ensnaring and uh, dragging you down so uh if that helped you <laughs> on anything going on with your life right now then i hope uh, i hope it did help <laughs> but that is my morning pull for the day all right so um yeah so that was pretty much all i wanted to do i know we didn't have like a very specific uh spread that we were doing here um 
it, it was a lot of experimentation, but it was having fun with some Lenormand, <laughs> you know, which is not, um, I haven't done a lot of Lenormand readings this year. I've really focused on tarot um, and a little bit oracles. So um, I was happy to pull out my some of my Lenormand cards and um, just have some fun and um, figure out if I could... Uh, add on to some of these traditional Lenormand spreads. So thank you so much for watching. Um, and let me know too, uh, which one of these you kind of like the most. Did you like um, using tarot as kind of spread positions or some of the archetypes um, as uh, spread positions? <laughs> um, the uh, Something like this where maybe it's in a different language or something that's got the uh, name on the top with some keywords at the bottom with, you know, putting the Lenormand in the middle, um, or, or of course using another Lenormand deck as a background, or finally like the last one, which was using a kind of a mix, honestly, but a focus on something a bit more heavy, like a, a deity, uh, advice from a deity. So let me know which one uh, was uh, most interesting to you. And um, yeah, and, I, and if you guys do any, uh, any of these spreads or kind of add on to um, what I was doing here I would love to see some videos um, just just tag me and and I would I would love to watch so thank you so much for watching everyone and I will see you next time bye